Welcome to the greenhouses at the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. This is specifically one of the crossing greenhouses for the strawberry breeding program. So in this greenhouse, we're making crosses uh, at the same time we're evaluating fruit in the field during strawberry season. So in other words, from December until the end of February, we're making crosses in this greenhouse at the same time as the peak of the Florida strawberry season. It's important that we do this process in a greenhouse so that we can exclude pollinators like bees or any other insects that might move pollen such as thrips. And so we do it inside this enclosed greenhouse and we pay attention to any pollinators that may invade the space and control them very carefully. Because what we're trying to do here is make controlled crosses in which we prevent both self-pollination and any cross-pollination that we don't want so that we can make only the cross that we do want to make. So before we actually perform the cross itself, first I want to show you the anatomy of a strawberry flower. So here on the outside we have the sepals, which are collectively called the calyx, the green part here, which becomes the green cap, if you will, on top of the strawberry when it fully matures. Here we have the, the uh, petals, which are collectively called the corolla. The next layer we have inside are the anthers, which release the pollen. And in the very center of the flower, we have the female parts or the pistils. So you can see that this strawberry flower is a perfect flower. It has both male and female parts. And in the field, it's capable of self-pollinating. And that's what typically happens in strawberry production is that the pollen from these anthers simply shed onto the pistils and that's what allows the fruit to form and properly form and ripen in the field. But of course in the crossing, we want to prevent this from self-pollinating. So what we do is before this flower opens to the stage that you're seeing right now, when, when, the, when the calyx is actually completely closed and before the pollen is dehissing, that's when we, do, we perform the mas emasculation process. So next we're gonna show you how the emasculation is done. So here we're going to show an emasculation, which means that we need to remove the male parts of the flower so that the flower will not self-pollinate. And in strawberry, the easiest way to do that is to remove the calyx, the corolla, and the anthers all in one step. So we use a very fine uh, tool here to basically grasp only the edge of the calyx and when that is grasped and pulled away, the petals also come away and the anthers also come away. And what we're left with in the end is just the female parts of the flower, the pistils, which appear yellow there. And it's gonna be ready for pollination in one day to three days. So because we're removing uh, the male parts of the flower before the flower is fully open and ready to be pollinated, we need to let those pistils mature so that they're more receptive to the pollen. So we found generally between one and three days after emasculation is the best time to then perform the pollination. So now we've come back one to two days later and we're ready to perform the pollination. Here you see the vials that we use for storing pollen with the, the male uh, parent on the vial. So in this case, we have the 1141 selection, 191141, and that is the male that's going to be crossed onto this female. So we're going to take that pollen and we're going to use a fine camel hairbrush to take some of the pollen from the cap of the vial and then apply it directly onto the pistils of the flower. And the key here is just to do it lightly and evenly all across all the surface of the pistils because we want as many of those to fertilize as possible. And the more evenly we get the pollen, the more even that resulting fruit and the more seeds we're gonna get from the pollination. So we usually go back into the cap of that vial and, and get more pollen onto the tip of the brush several times so that we can be absolutely sure that we're getting as much uh, complete pollination as possible. 
So once we've gotten enough pollen that we're confident we've covered all of the pistils, then we'll tag the flower. So what we'll do is we'll show one that was previously done as an example. So the tag lists the cross number, which is cross 86 that you can see on the top. The female plant that we're pollinating onto is 1813-109, and as I just showed, the male pollen was 1911-41, and this particular pollination was made on February 12th, 2021, just a couple days before the one we just pollinated. So the female is always listed first on the tag, and this way when the fruit is mature and we harvest the fruit with the seeds on it, we can properly assign them to each cross. Each female that we're using in crossing is gonna have its own individual pot like this. So in other words, this, this plant right here is the female parent that's gonna be used in the cross. And in this particular example, this particular female is selection 16.30-128, which means that this particular female parent was a 2016 selection that was from the 30th cross and was the 128th seedling from that cross. We have here a code that we scan that connects into a customized crossing app so that we can make sure that whoever is going to perform the crossing on this particular female has the correct female uh, and is also going to scan the code on the vial to make sure that we have the correct pollen because it's very important that we're making the correct cross in each case. So what we see here is fruit several uh, weeks after pollination. This one here was pollinated about one week ago, this one about two weeks ago, and this one about three weeks ago. Generally it takes about three to four weeks depending on the temperature in the greenhouse for the fruit to ripen. And once the fruit are completely red, all the way from where the calyx would have been attached down to the tip of the fruit, that means that the fruit is ready and the seeds, or actually the achenes as they're technically called, can then be extracted from the fruit and then would be later ready for germination. So essentially what we would do is take a fruit like this, we would blend it up in water, and we would do that to separate the seeds from the flesh. The seeds that float are not filled, but the seeds that fall to the bottom after blending are filled, and then we use that process iteratively to clean off the seeds, dry them, and then they're ready for the germination process.